YouTube's just released a new tool that may have destroyed views and watch time for all of our channels. And not only that, it could impact the revenue you make on your channel. So look at this. This new tool, the way it works, is that if you put your cursor on the timeline, you see this waveform that wasn't there before. At one point in the timeline, it will say the most replayed section. So presumably this is where viewers on a video are tapping on a certain point in the timeline to watch it more than anything else. Let us know though, is this something that you would find useful? Let us know in the comments. Yeah, because we're finding this fascinating and we're encountering it for the first time. And as you might imagine, we've got some thoughts and opinions. Let's talk about why this new feature exists in the first place. And it comes down to satisfaction, all right? YouTube's number one goal for anybody who's watching YouTube is to cancel their Disney Plus and their Netflix and watch YouTube literally forever. But I really wanted to watch Obi-Wan Kenobi. You were the chosen one! Is this essentially open season on everybody's audience retention? Let's take a look at that. In the YouTube studio, as you've no doubt seen, you'll have this audience retention graph, which slowly goes down like a hockey stick as the audience drops off, but it does show the spikes. But how does this translate into the video that a viewer sees? This is the same video, but from the viewer's perspective. And as you can see, it does show the spikes, but it doesn't necessarily show the drop off. And just to demonstrate how powerful this is for showing viewers and creators the moments of viewer spikes, let's take a look at this little segment from a video I made a little while ago. Secondly, and more importantly, we're going to do a quick thumbnail test. Two thumbnails are going to appear on screen, and all you need to tell me is which one you would click on and why. Ready? Go. Yeah, I didn't give you long there, did I? But it was still more than enough time to pick a thumbnail, right? So it's pretty obvious why people were jumping back to this part of the video. They wanted to see these thumbnails in a little more detail. And that's a clear demonstration of how you can use viewer engagement tactics to increase your audience retention. Now, a big concern about this, as we mentioned, is that people are afraid this is going to completely tank their watch time. Because as you just saw, there's sections of videos that people are basically watching more than others. But that's where Pierce comes in. We heard concerns from creators that this feature would decrease watch time or negatively impact some content types. The good news is that in our experiment, we found there's no statistically significant impact to watch time from showing these graphs. So that was Pierce. He is a product manager over on YouTube and he specifically works on satisfaction on the platform. And when he says that this will not have a negative impact on watch time, I'm trying to believe him because that's everyone's now, in the past, we've seen similar concerns about abbreviated subcounts and the removal of public dislikes. But months, years after those events have happened, is anybody still fiercely complaining about them, saying that this is having a huge impact on their channel? I'm not really seeing that. But what I will say is that when it comes to these audience satisfaction waveforms, the creator inside a video doesn't have it. Hashtag conspiracy. All kidding aside, if you really want a conspiracy, maybe we should take a look at the parts of the videos that aren't getting any views. We looked at the spikes. Now let's look at the parts that are a little more flat. We have a video that has a product placement in it. Let's watch the beginning of this video. We have the usual intro. This is about uh, World War II animated recreations of battles. What comes next? This video is sponsored by Morning Brew a sponsored segment. Now, let's take a look at how that impacts the viewer's satisfaction. We have this flat line, and if I track my mouse along here, you can see that the advert is still going on, and then look what happens when we get to one minute, nine seconds. The most replayed section, they just want to get to the content, that's where they're going to click, and they get the into the video. How useful is that for advertisers? I would say that is rather concerning to see, and honestly, I can kind of relate to the graph we just saw because I I myself skip a lot of product placements from creators who I otherwise really like and I want them to get paid for what they do. Of course, what this doesn't show is the impact of this advert in terms of conversions. Yes, not many people may be watching this part of the video. But those who are may still be buying the products. Ultimately, advertisers are going to need to get creative, I think, one way or another. I've talked to a lot of
lot of influencers who have worked with brands and they, some, they sometimes get a whole script that they're supposed to read off. And I think now brands are gonna need to allow creators to create, to take their brand image and kind of play with it a little bit in a way that works for their audience. Dan, are we being too negative here? Is this just a dollop of scaremongering? What are the advantages of this tool? Well, I do think there is a little bit of good news. I think for one, this could help a new viewer to your channel stick around a little bit longer where they might not have before. Ultimately, this is more data for everybody, viewers, creators, advertisers, and those who learn how to understand it the most can leverage it the best. As regards to earning money, there has been a lot of positive news stories recently from YouTube, and you can learn about them and how to earn more money for your channel over here.